I'm Katie and this is my brother Jack. Hi. We're here to talk to you about fire safety and the danger that fire can cause. How dangerous is fire? Fire can be deadly dangerous. A fire in a house can start as easy as this and you might not hear anything. The burning fabric hardly makes a sound, then the fire will quickly spread. A bit like a bonfire outside? No, a fire inside will spread much faster than a fire outside. Within 30 seconds, the fabric on the sofa starts to give off poisonous gas and heat. What happens to them? The gases very quickly rise to the ceiling and become trapped. Then they spread out and form a layer under the ceiling. This layer becomes thicker and hotter as more material burns. What would happen if the lounge door was left open? The whole house would quickly fill with this hot, toxic smoke. How dangerous is it? Choking smoke is just as dangerous and deadly as the flames. After only two minutes, this layer of trapped smoke gets hotter and hotter. As the heat increases, it will quickly burn whatever else is in the room. Wow! After three minutes, the heat becomes so intense that everything in the room reaches to what it's called the ignition point and it immediately bursts into flames. That's like an explosion! Yes, firefighters call this the flashover and then the fire accelerates out of control in all directions. That's unbelievable! And it only takes three minutes. Yes, the same amount of time it takes you to brush your teeth. And fire can destroy a lot more than furniture and belongings. If anyone had been in the room, they wouldn't have survived. One thing that can cause a fire is carelessness. You should always take extra care if you're cooking in the kitchen and never leave anything unattended on the hob or under the grill. Where your attention stops, that's when fires can start. Never get distracted. What if you need to answer the door or get the phone? Then remove whatever it is you're cooking away from the heat and turn off the cooker. If you have a chip pan fire, never try and move the pan and never ever throw water over it. Why not? Because this will cause a fireball that could very easily set the room alight. Instead, you should turn off the heat, but only if it's safe to do so. Then leave the room, close the door and call the fire and rescue service immediately on 999. I never realised chip pans were so dangerous. But not only chip pans, Jack, ovens and grills are also kitchen hazards. You should always clean the grill pan after using it. Fires can start from the fat or grease that has been left. This can burn after it gets reheated. I suppose it's best to use oven gloves when you're using the oven. Yes, but never put oven gloves or tea towels down in the cooker after you've used them. They could ignite and start a fire. If anybody smokes in your house, that's another danger. They should never smoke in a bed or leave a cigarette unattended. They should always stub it out in a proper ashtray. Lit candles and scented sticks should never be left in a room that nobody is in. They should be placed in secure holders on surfaces that won't burn and away from materials that will burn. Also, be extra careful you don't brush past a candle if you're wearing a long dress or loose clothing. You could end up getting seriously burnt. And never ever play with matches or lighters. They should always be put well away from small children. If matches or lighters touch your clothes, they can very quickly catch fire. If your clothes were to catch fire, don't panic. You should stop, drop and roll. Remember, a small fire can very quickly turn into a big one and you might not be able to put it out. You may think it could never happen to you, but many people get seriously hurt or lose their lives in fires each year. You can prevent this from happening if you follow a nighttime routine. What's a nighttime routine? Right, guys, come on, it's bedtime now. Okay. All right. A nighttime routine is a sort of plan in which you check a list of things to make sure your house is safe each night before going to bed. Always remember to tidy away your toys, shoes, and clothes. Why do you need to tidy things away? because there's less chance of you tripping over things if you have to escape from your house in a hurry. Turn off your television and any other electrical items.
Alright, we're to bed then. Yeah, come on. I'll turn this off. Right. Your parents should make sure all electrical items are turned off. And all the downstairs doors are closed. They should also make sure the front door is locked and the key is put away somewhere safe, in the same place where everyone can get to it easily. They should also take their mobile phones with them when they go to bed. So, you should always remember to tidy the bedroom floor, turn off all electrical items, close all the downstairs doors, lock the front door and place the keys somewhere safe. That's a lot of things to remember. Yes, but if you do it regularly, like every night brushing your teeth, your nighttime routine will become a habit and it could even save your life. A smoke alarm is the easiest and most effective way to alert you to the danger of a fire. If there's smoke in your house, the alarm will warn you of it. This will give you precious time to escape. But what if you don't have a smoke alarm? Well, they're not expensive for your parents to buy or difficult to fit. But if your parents are worried how to install one, then your local firefighters will be happy to visit you and fit one for free. Your parents just need to fill in a request form on this website or ring this free phone number. Do you just need one alarm in your house? The more you have, the safer you'll be. At the very least, you should have one in each level in the middle of hall and landing ceilings. How does that look? Fine. Right. How do they work? Well, the alarm is so sensitive that it can detect smoke. Once it does this, it will then go off, making a loud sound that you will hear. This is to warn you and anyone else in your house to get out immediately. So that's all you need to know about smoke alarms, is it? No, there's more. They should all be checked regularly, at least monthly, by pressing the test button until it sounds. Twice a year, the inside should be gently vacuumed to remove dust and any small insects from the sensors. After ten years, it's best to get a whole new alarm. The best way to survive a fire is to be ready for it. How can you be ready for one? By having a fire action plan, a plan that your family should follow which will allow you to escape if there was a fire. If you practice a fire action plan, you'll know exactly what to do without panicking. This girl has recently received a visit from the fire and rescue service at her school and is now telling her parents about nighttime routines and how important it is to have a fire action plan. Now, here's what could happen if there was a fire in your home. The family are asleep. Their house has a fire in the downstairs room. The flames hardly make any noise, but they do make smoke. With so much smoke in the downstairs room, it starts to seep out through any gaps around the door. Now the smoke is set to smoke alarm off. The older girl is first to be woken by the smoke alarm. What should she do so her and her family can get out safely? Should she start tidying up, go out on her own or wake up the others? Yes, you are right, she should wake up the others. First she wakes up her younger brother and explains that there is a fire. Then she tells him what they are going to do. What should they do next? Play on the computer, go straight outside or go in their parents' bedroom. Yes, you are right, they should go to the parents' room. They make their way cow to the door. But then what should they do? Should they go and get Teddy, open the door straight away, or check the door for heat? Yes, you are right. They should check the door for heat. You do this by using the back of your hand. What if the door's warm? Then you shouldn't open it, because this means fire will be on the other side. All right, kids, come on. We need to get downstairs. There's a fire. 
Now the family is together and carefully make their way downstairs. Once at the bottom of the stairs, they have to make a decision. What should they do next? Should they open the door and look for the fire, get their favourite toys, or go straight outside? Living room's on fire. Come on, put it there. Yes, you are right. They should go straight outside. You should never stop to investigate the fire or collect valuables or pets. The family are now safe outside. One of the parents uses their mobile phone to call the fire and rescue service. because they followed the fire action plan that their daughter learnt from the fire and rescue service when they visited her school. So that's why it's important to a fire action plan. Yes, it could save you and your family's lives. This time, the living room door has been left open as smoke is spreading up the stairs. Again, the girl checks the door for heat with the back of her hand. Now the family are together. They notice that fire is spreading out of the living room and blocking their escape route. The smoke is pouring up the stairs, but what should they do next? Should they hide, go downstairs or go in the parents' bedroom? Yes, you are right. They shouldn't go downstairs. They should crawl low in the smoke and go to a bedroom. Why should you crawl on the floor? Because the air will be the cleanest down there. Now the family made it to the parents' bedroom, but what should they do next? Should they hide, escape through the window, or go downstairs? Yes, you are right. When there is no other option, they should escape through the window. If possible, try and find a window that leads to a flat roof, or the top of a bay window or garage. The family are safe outside and one of the parents goes to a neighbour's house to phone the fire and rescue service. This time, when the girl checks the door for heat, she can feel that it's hot. Because the door is hot, the children decide to stay in the room on their own. But what should they do next? Open the hot door, play on the computer, or block gaps around the door? Yes, you are right. They should block all the gaps around the door with clothing and bedding to keep the smoke out. The youngest boy has decided to hide under the bed. Is he doing the right thing? Yes, hide. No, don't hide. You should never hide. You can never hide from the smoke or the fire. You will only be hiding from the firefighters. By standing at the window, you can be easily seen. Now that the window's open, the children can stand in the fresh air and wait calmly until the firefighters arrive. They can also shout to let neighbours and passers-by know so they can phone for help. The children should stay by the window until the firefighters arrive.
you. My house is on fire. Quick test. What number do you call in an emergency? 111, 123, 999 or 666? The number you must dial if there is a fire emergency is 999. The first thing you will be asked is, what service do you require? You should answer the fire and rescue service. The fire and rescue service, please. You will then be put through to a fire and rescue service operator. Fire and rescue. My house is on fire. It's a house fire. And what's your address? You must give your name, the full address of your home and your phone number. 26 Acacia Avenue, Winsford. Must explain the type of emergency and say what is on fire. It's the living room. Explain if anyone is trapped. Is there anybody in the house? Everybody's out now. The more information the fire and rescue service has, the quicker firefighters can get to you. OK, if everybody stays out, we'll be with you straight away. OK, thanks. Thank you, bye. Fire can be very dangerous, but if you follow these steps, you can escape to safety. Have a working smoke alarm. Close all the downstairs doors at night. Have a fire action plan. In case of a fire, get out, stay out and call the fire and rescue service. Well, that's about it from Jack and myself and fire safety at home. Tell your family what you've learned about the dangers of fire and how important it is to have a fire action plan and a nighttime routine. If you follow the safety advice that we've given to you, it will greatly reduce the chance of fire in your home. But more importantly, it could save your life. Thanks, Jack.